you take the high road and I'll take the low road and I'll be in Scotland for ye. But me and my true love will never meet again on the bonny, bonny banks of Loch Lomond. Welcome one and all to another premium spirits review here on the KOE Nation. I am the devilishly out, handsome outlaw himself and the master of the singing note himself. Your King of Extreme, Phil Kaywee, joined by my indomitable broadcast partners in inebriation. The one, the only. Tony fucking G, like, share, subscribe. And, Germs, we are here to review a scotch whiskey that Tony G has uh, been looking forward to for more than a minute or two. Yeah, my dad gave me this for my birthday, and oh. I'm not familiar with this one. I will let you open your birthday and present then, sir. I'm, yeah, I'm a little It's eager. only fit. It's only fit. This is a single malt, 12 year. And as I've mentioned before in the past, this is a green bottle, so that does suggest that this will be a peaty scotch. So, I could go to one of two ways with me. I could either love it or hate it, because a light peat oh, is, so is nice. A light peat is nice. Heavy peat, mm, not so much. So, we will soon find out. I'm, I'm eager either way. What, uh... Does it say where this is from? What area of Scotland? I didn't see, but it's a 46%. Mm, so, not quite 50. Almost. So, let's see. Oh, may I have the cork, sir? Uh, right there. Oh, okay. Let's read off here for a moment. Let it this exquisite 12-year-old single malt has a deep, fruity character of things I'm not going to say with characteristics of other things I'm not going to say, <laughs> found in Loch Lomond whiskeys, aged in three types of cask, oh. bourbon, refill, and recharge. These whiskeys are brought together, mm. delivering a perfectly balanced single malt under the watchful eye of Michael Henry, our master distiller. Loch Lomond, 12-year-old, is non-chill filtered to keep things as nature intended. Mm. Ah, so, Loch Lomond, and it doesn't say anywhere on the bottle what, uh, yeah, it just does not say, oh, does not say what area of Scotland, so we're yeah. going to have to use our noses. Okay, well, let's give that a sample. Germs, mm. to be frank, we might be a little more versed and oh. traveling through the island by our nose. Oh, I'm instantly reminded of that Caluno. I was about to say, definitely not a Highland or a Space Act. No, uh. It's hmm. kind of, it, it huh. does remind me of an aisle, but I could be wrong on that. It's got a little bit of a smoke. It, it's clearly going to be peaty, but a, a sweet peat. Yeah, yeah. Just on the nose. How dare I say, like, huh. I know there's someone from the lowlands wow. are going to kick me. It was like, you, you suppose it could be like maybe a lowland malt or something? I don't know. We, we don't have hmm. a lot of experience with that one. We'll keep your eyes on this space for that, but. Yeah, if I, I know. if you really nice. were to hold a gun to my head and say, "Guess where this is from?" I'd say Isles. Like that's probably just... fair. Well, let's see how. Yeah. It, what, what's your take on the nose? It smells like whiskey. There you have it. Okay. okay, all right. You can always count on germs for the deep dive omnibus study. So, yeah. folks, here we go. Hmm. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, peaty, medicinal, smoky. Um, wow. Ooh. Bit of that sweet bourbon hint there. Of yeah. Those vanillas and caramel, though. I was just thinking that, like, I, I didn't get the overly scotch peatiness. I was thinking uh, I was it's there, of though. bourbons, but yeah. It's there, but it's not. This is like, again, Ooh. if you were to. A nice finish. Yeah, this is. A lot better than I figured it yeah. would be. It's still very fruity and sweet. Mm, I don't know if I'd go for f I, exactly fruity. Now, again, you got to remember. I'm, I'm getting that on the back end. Though. I'm comparing it to Space Side and mm -hmm. Highland Malt, so that's not really fair. Um, let's see if I can get some uh, mm. fruit on the extraction. I'm going to keep it on the palate for 12 seconds. Hmm. This does suggest fruity characters of peach and pear, vanilla sweetness. Mm. I 
Yeah, I see. I agree. You say better, I can taste it, man. Well, yeah, I'm. I was thinking fruit. I'd, okay, Tony. I like it. Leave it on your tongue for twelve seconds, okay. and see if it doesn't remind you of every Irish whiskey you love. Um, the reason I bring that up is because generally, a scotch that's been aged, you want to leave it on your tongue for if it's been aged twelve sec, twelve years, you want to leave it on your tongue for twelve seconds. If it's been aged eighteen years, at least eighteen seconds. And so on and so forth for however long it's been aged. And is that not quite a minty little finish there? Huh? It is. I, I was thinking the finish is very appealing to me. I, I really like the finish. It's got that that refreshing on your throat and your mouth finish. I really like that. It's it's a little minty. It's not buttery right. mint, but it's it's nice. Now, germs, I'm gonna culture you up here a bit. Thank okay. You. I want Thank you to get a half of a palate full, not not a whole whole lot, mm. and I want you to keep it on in your mouth, swish it below and above your tongue for twelve seconds to represent each year that this has been aged. So, and uh, tell me once it's uh, over if you get anything different in your flavor profiles. So, and I will keep the amazing Koe Nation entertained while you do so. You're saying twelve seconds? Twelve seconds. Twelve seconds. Mm. All right. Now, below, above, above, below, let it get all wash across your palate, the insides of your cheeks, but behind your teeth, in front of your teeth, all throughout the mouth. Let it really get there for a full 12 seconds because this master distiller had to work 12 years to bring it to you, so you should at least give it 12 seconds worth of honor. So hmm. now open it, let mint. the oxygen hit your mouth. And is now it the, it's mint. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So. I've noticed that with some whiskeys, once you get it in there, the enzymes start to work with it. And then when the oxygen hits your mouth, you get this incredible yeah. minty sensation. It's, so. Yeah, it's, it's nice. I'm, I'm very impressed. Uh, so I, I do know this is on a bit of the, I, I want to say probably about the $40 range, maybe a little less depending on where yeah. you would find it. So it's, it's pretty affordable in terms of a, a single malt scotch, uh, you know, I would actually recommend this to people, I think. Yeah, this, uh, especially... Um, if you like Petey, I, I would go yeah, the crowd. Yeah, and it's light enough to the point where if you've got a friend who doesn't really like Pete... This is a good the, one. Both of you can enjoy this one. Yeah, I, exactly. Exactly so, what I was thinking. I can't get the mint off my tongue now. <laughs> <laughs> well, wash it down with a little more whiskey. You'll right, get there. Do it. Uh, now, we are moving on... You too, Greg. ...to scaling. Single malt scotch. Tony is a single malt scotch. One to five stars. Uh, as a single malt scotch, I will give this a... I'm going to go three and a quarter. Three and a quarter? Yep. And why is that, sir? It's... Have I spoiled you? Not well. I mean, yeah. <laughs> the more we do, the more we sample, it's, it's harder and harder to give top class reviews. But I, I like this a lot, but it... It's not bland, but it is one-dimensional, but not in a bad way. If you can understand what I'm saying with that. I'm going to give this 375 as a single malt scotch. Okay. I, I like this, even though it doesn't appeal to my personal taste. Sure, sure. This is excellent. I could it's, go higher. Germs, you don't want to? It's alcohol. It's pretty good. All right, all right. He's 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 honest, folks. At least give him that. Uh, as a Scotch, Tony G. As a Scotch, I'll, I'll definitely go three and a half. It, uh, like you said, it's got a great finish. It's got a nice nose. It, its taste is not overpowering, and there's a, it, the right amount of peat. Yeah, three and a half. I'm gonna agree with you. Three and a half. It's an excellent, excellent Scotch. And yeah, I would start some folks off yes. with Scotch like this. This is an introductory Scotch, absolutely. And also, like I know this isn't brought up a lot, but one of the reasons that they, you know, one of the uses of peatiness, I should say, not one of the reasons, but one of the uses of peatiness is some folks in your family, some people that might be of uh, the older persuasion, sometimes some folks through whatever reason throughout their life, their tongue starts to shut down. Sure, sure. And this peatiness helps react, you know, they can actually experience it even for people who are having severe taste problems. Yep. And this is a very, such a light version that you could enjoy this with like, you know, say your grandpa yeah. that doesn't, you know, likes to overly garlic and overly salt their food because they're having a harder time tasting. This is something that you could enjoy with older generations. Yeah. 
So that's why I, you know, I got to agree three and a half stars as a scotch, not only as an introduction, but if you're having a bottle with somebody that might be a little more seasoned than you. Sure, sure. Now, as a brown spirit, this is interesting. Um, three. All right. I go three. In terms of mixing fodder? You know. I don't know if I'd mix this. I wouldn't mix this. I don't know. Would you put it on the rocks? I'm uh, no, no. I, I generally keep. Would you, would you put this on the rocks? No, because my teeth normally hurt with ice. <laughs> well, then there you go. I yeah. don't know if I would. You know, this one I got a feeling is either going to be amazingly wonderful, and all those fruit notes are going to come out the minute you put it on the rocks, or it's just going to dilute it. And ruin it. I would drip water. That's it. Yeah, I bet. I bet that's closer. Yeah. Uh, in terms of brown spirits, I'm going to give three, two, five. There you go. Uh, it's good, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't mix it. Now, <laughs> Sheldon. Uh, I set this on my middle shelf. I brought it over tonight. It's going to go back in my middle. Definitely. Here's, I don't know that I'd look for it, but now that I've had it, wouldn't shy away from it. Exactly. There you go. Yep. Yeah, um, it would just depend on what had the most room. If I had some room on my bottom shelf, it'd go there. If I had room on my middle shelf, it would go there. So uh, in and of itself, I would, if this is my bottle, I'd put it on my middle shelf. But if I had to make room, this would go down. Okay. Bill's going to sing every time I open it, I'm going to get a bottle. Well, I go. mean, if you just need to hear the soft summer sounds of my voice, folks. I mean, I, I, I understand that. I understand that. So... All right. Oh, man, as I'm known to say around here, all that being said, folks, this has been our tremendous review of Loch Lomond. So, I am the devilishly handsome outlaw himself, your king of extreme, the man of the hour, the man with the power, the man that makes the other podcast cower, Phil KOE. Signing off and handing it off to my indomitable broadcast partners, Germs and Tony fucking G. Thank you much, folks.